Good day, everyone. In this video, you can trace Jose Rizal's first travel in Europe and see many significant events in his life abroad. Tara, samahan natin si Jose Rizal sa kanyang paglalakbay sa Europa. Why did Rizal decide to study abroad? Well, there are reasons according to his biographers. First, he wanted to be trained at the guidance of experts and to acquire valuable knowledge in Europe. He felt that there were too many issues in UST education and one of these is the rampant discrimination against Filipino students. During Rizal's time, it should also be noted that Europe was the center of scientific and educational advancement. Aside from that, medical education in UST was relatively new. Hence, universities in Europe may provide the needed training for him in becoming a great doctor. Most importantly, Rizal had a secret mission, which was strongly supported by his brother, Pasiano. That is, to write a book about the true situations and problems in the Philippines. And also, he had the mission to observe keenly the life and culture, languages and customs, industries and commerce, as well as governments and laws of European nations, in order to prepare himself in the mighty task of liberating his oppressed people from Spanish tyranny. He secretly bought a ticket going to Spain and boarded the ship Salvadora to avoid detection of Spanish authorities and friars, wherein he used the passport with the name Jose Mercado. From 1882 to 1887, the countries visited by Rizal in Europe were Spain, France, Germany, and he had a grand tour of Europe together with Maximo Viola in 1887 after publishing the Noli Mitangere. If there are people who knew that he was going to Europe, they were his brother Pasiano, his sisters Narcisa and Lucia, and a few friends. Before departure, he wrote two letters. The first was for his beloved parents, and one for his girlfriend Leonor Rivera, which were delivered immediately after his departure. His voyage in the steamer or ship was highly enriching for him. He made sketches of sceneries and people. He likewise noted that his conversations with many passengers made him realize that many were leaving the country for financial reasons. And he was sad to find out that none of them spoke about the country. With tears in his eyes and sadness in his heart, Rizal hastily took his drawing book and sketch the port of Manila as it slowly vanish in view as you can see in his drawing full of sadness. On May 8, 1882 somewhere near Singapore Rizal saw a lighthouse in an island and sketched it. This was the Raffles Lighthouse located, located in Pulau Satumu Island which is in Singapore Strait, about 14 kilometers south of the main island of Singapore. This was named after Sir Stamford Raffles, a British statesman who founded Singapore. After one day, Rizal's first stop was Singapore and stayed at Hotel de la Paz for two days. Rizal was impressed by the progress of Singapore which was a British colony at that time. He can't resist to compare the Philippines and Singapore, which were both colonies. The Filipinos were suffering from the Spaniards, while the Singaporeans were prospering under British rule. Rizal noticed that Singaporeans trusted their British administrators, unlike the Filipinos who feared and hated the Spanish colonizers. After two days, Rizal boarded the ship Gemna, a steamer managed by a French 
Shipping Company, Messagerie Maritime. Rizal compared Gemna and Salvadora. According to him, Gemna was larger and cleaner. Its interior was carpeted and the toilets were excellent. While on board the ship, she, he tried to communicate to French-speaking passengers, but found out his French was poor, so he tried to improve it by reading a French newspaper. On May 17, 1882, the ship, ship Gemna reached Point Gal, a seacoast town in southern Ceylon. Rizal wrote in his diary, Point Gal was picturesque but lonely, quiet, and at the same time, sad. The next day, the ship left Point Gal, and after a few hours, it arrived at Colombo, which was Ceylon's capital. For information, Ceylon is the old name of Sri Lanka today. Sri Lanka was founded by the Portuguese in 1517. However, the Dutch colonized it in 1658. While the British expelled the Dutch in 1796 and became the first British crown colony in Asia in the year 1802. In May 28, 1882, his ship arrived at the port city of Aden, Yemen, where Rizal had his refreshment. And here, in his drawing of the port, he was also amazed seeing lots of camels for the first time in Yemen. From Aden, the ship continued to sail up to Port Suez, which was the Red Sea terminal of the Suez Canal. Upon arrival, Rizal disembarked and went sightseeing, like any ordinary tourist. What impressed him most was the beautiful moonlight, which reminded him of Kalamba and his family. At Port Said, Rizal was fascinated with the multiracial inhabitants living in the place. On June 11, 1882, Rizal reached Naples, Italy. Rizal was pleased on this Italian city because of its business activity, lively people, and the paramatic beauty. Malamang, sinabi niya, Que bella cita. Or in English, what a beautiful city. After crossing the Mediterranean Sea, the ship arrived at Marseille, a French port city. Rizal toured the city and visited Chateau Z, the venue of his favorite novel, The Count of Monte Cristo, by Alexander Dumas. After three years, three days of touring the city, he boarded an express train to Spain. At the Spanish border at Port Bau, his papers were checked. He noticed the indifference of Spanish immigration officers compared to their French counterparts. Rizal arrived in Barcelona, Spain's largest city, on June 16, 1882. Comparing again, to other European cities, he found Barcelona a stark, dirty, and ugly city. After several days in the city, he noted in his diary that people in Barcelona, like other parts of Spain, enjoyed their freedom, unlike Filipinos in the Philippines. According to his friends in Spain, Rizal usually walked at the Plaza de Catalonia with former classmates in Ateneo. Weeks after his stay in Barcelona, he decided to go to Madrid, the capital city of Spain, where cost of living is little cheaper. 
The first major writing of Rizal while he was in Madrid was the nationalistic essay entitled El Amor Patrio, using the pen name Laong Laan, meaning Ever Prepared. He was just 21 years old then. The essay was first published in August 20, 1882, issue of Jaryong Tagalog in Manila. In the essay, he said, and I quote, Love of country is the purest, most heroic, and most sublime human sentiment. It is gratitude. It is affection for everything that reminds us of something of the first days of our life. It is the land where our ancestors are sleeping. Love of country is never a face once it has penetrated the heart because it carries with it a divine stamp which renders it eternal and imperishable. Of all loves, that of country is the greatest, the most heroic. End of quote. This results essay emphasizes that Philippines is a country of, for Filipinos, not for the Spaniards. During his first few weeks in Madrid, Rizal received sad news from the Philippines. First, a letter from his brother Pasciano dated September 15, 1882, informing him of a cholera epidemic that was ravaging Manila and nearby provinces wherein many people already died and continued dying every day. He also received a letter from his friend Jose Maria Cecilio, also known as Chengoy, telling him about the sadness of Leonor Rivera, who was getting thinner because of the absence of our beloved. This sad news tested Rizal's perseverance. Despite all these ads, in November 3, 1882, Rizal enrolled two courses, Medicine and Philosophy and Letters, at Universidad Central de Madrid. While in Madrid, he wanted to succeed and fulfill his mission. As a student in Madrid, Rizal had insatiable thirst for knowledge. He took lessons in painting and sculpture at Real Academia de Bellas Artes de San Fernando. At the same time, shooting and fencing at Hall of Arms of Sons e Carbonell. Then he likewise took lessons in languages, particularly English, French, and German at Ateneo de Madrid. Imagine how hectic the schedule of Jose Rizal while studying medicine in Europe. But what is amazing to our national hero is his commitment to his mission. He never wasted his time as a student in Madrid. With this, let Rizal teach you discipline, commitment, and perseverance. As a typical student, he had only 700 pesos as his allowance given to him by his brother Pasciano. Take note that his parents did not know that he went to Spain to study. Di na, dito natin makikitaan ng lakas ng loob si Jose Rizal dahil napakakonti ng kanyang pera para mag-aral sa Europa pero hindi ito naging malaking balakid sa kanyang misyon. But as soon as his father Don Francisco learned his trip abroad, he arranged to send him money regularly through Antonio Rivera. While studying in Madrid, he lived frugally by spending his money only on food, clothing, lodging, and books. His only extravagance was a few pesetas for lottery tickets in the Madrid lottery. Yes, regular na tumataya noon si Rizal sa loto sa Madrid. Nevertheless, Rizal lived a Spartan life in Madrid. All his expenses were listed down to the last peseta. He never spent a peseta on card gambling, dating women, and drinking so many wine. 
In his diary, he said that even taking a bath was additional cost for him. Since it was cold in Spain, he took baths less often. Fortunately, this saved him 35 pesetas. May imagine nyo, bihira naliligo nun si Rizal habang estudyante sa Madrid. He spent most of his spare time reading and writing at his boarding house. If not, he visited libraries, attended lectures, religious fiestas, and operas. He also attended reunions of Filipino students at the house of the brothers Antonio, Maximo, and Pedro Paterno, where they practiced shooting and fencing. Malala nyo ang paboritong sport ni Rizal ay fencing. While studying in Europe, Jose Rizal was passionate about fencing. Either practicing with fellow Filipinos or attending matches with his fraternity brothers, the Swabians. The picture shows Juan Luna at left, Pardo de Tabera, and Valentin Ventura as his sparring partners in fencing. On Saturday evenings, Rizal regularly visited the, the home of Don Pablo Ortiga E. Rey, who had been the city mayor of Manila during the administration of Governor General Carlos Maria de la Torre. There he met Don Pablo's daughter, Consuelo, who later fell in love with him. Rizal was not really a handsome man. Hindi naman siya yung kagandahang lalaki nung panahon niya. Physically, he was neither dashing nor imposing, for he was a small man, a few inches above five feet in height. Si Rizal ay may tangkad lang na 5'2". Medyo malit ayon sa standard natin ngayon. But he possessed an aura of charisma due to his many splendor talents and noble character which made him attractive to romantic women in Europe. At ang una sa kanila ay etong si Consuelo Ortiga E. Rey. Rizal, a lonely young man in a foreign country, was attracted also to Consuelo's beauty and vivacity. On August 22, 1883, he composed a poem dedicated to her entitled A La Senorita, C-O-Y-R, wherein he expressed his administration of her and his solace including joy in her company. However, before the romance became serious, Rizal backed out. First, because she was still engaged with Leonor Rivera, malamang na-realize niyo si Rizal, na pagiging two-timer na yung ginagawa niya at hindi niya nakakalimutan na may isang babaeng nagangalang Leonor Rivera na pinangakuhan niya ng kasal sa Pilipinas. Second, his friend and fellow compatriot in the propaganda movement named Eduardo Dilete was madly in love with Consuelo. He had no wish to break their friendship just because of a pretty woman. During his first year in Madrid, Rizal became a member of the student organization Circulo Hispano Filipino, which was established by a group of Filipino students in Madrid aimed at voicing out the concerns of Filipinos. It was first led by Juan Ataide, a Spanish born in Manila and a military officer. The group also requested Rizal to write a poem, and so Rizal composed a poem for them. The title was, Mi Piden Versos. In English, You Ask Me for Verses. This conveyed the sentiments of a poet forced to write only things that would please his listeners. Critics of Rizal believed that this poem is less in terms of quality of all the literary pieces written by our national hero. 
because he was forced to. Notable members of the Circulo Hispano-Filipino were Rizal, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, Juan Luna, Graciano Lopez Heina, and many others. Supported by a group of peninsulares, the organization became the first instrument of voicing out the concerns of Filipinos. It had regular meetings and informal programs which included poetry reading, debates, and discussions about political issues. In 1883, Rizal became the me a member of a worldwide fraternity of Freemasonry, joining the Acacia Lads No. 9 in Madrid, and later, he also joined other lodges in Europe. Rizal's Masonic name was Di Masalang, meaning ungraspable. Joining the Masons helped Rizal's political reputation. The Masons were known for their liberal ideas. For instance, the Spanish Masons proclaimed a new era of freedom from restrictions of government and the church. The Spanish Freemasonry in Madrid was a dedicated organization which pointed out the prior abuses in the Philippines. Freemasonry also criticized government policies which upheld despotism. In retaliation, the Catholic Church condemned Freemasonry as its beliefs are contrary to the doctrines of the Church. Members of the organization were obliged to retract to obtain the sacraments. While in Spain, Rizal became an avid book collector and was able to accumulate a library of them, such as the Bible, Hebrew grammar, lives of the presidents of the United States, complete works of Voltaire, Horace, Bernard, and Alexander Dumas, including history of the French Revolution, ancient poetry, the Renaissance, and many others. Even if he had limited budget, much of his allowance and money he received from the propaganda movement was used for food, clothing, and accommodation. He spent considerably on books, especially cheap second-hand books. Another books collected by Rizal, he was Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin. The book highly affected him okay, and this is the book which inspired him to write his novel No Limitangere. This book was anti-slavery novel which fueled the civil war. It was the best selling novel of the 19th century and the second best selling book against the Bible that time. It depicts the abuses of American slave owners and miserable conditions of Negroes in Southern American states. Also, the book of Eugene Sue entitled The Wandering Jew. It is an anti-Catholic novel and about the persecution of a Protestant family by the Jesuits. Another is La Deche Redada, or The Disowned or Disinherited, by Benito Perez Galdos. Isa si Galdos sa pinakasikat na manunulat ng Espanya. Siya ay isang realist novelist. Yan noong estudyante pa lang si Rizal sa Madrid. He sought to depict the impact current political, social, and economic factors that strongly shape everyday life. Lalong-lalo yung mga inventions and discoveries. 
these inventions and discoveries came later to Spain that the rest of Europe he already had. Galdos so this uh, lately arrived modernity as he as uh, optimism generated by the influx of foreign ideas and fashion imposed on native folk days. At the same time of liberating cast of mind, he proposed unmasking of the ways that traditionally traditional religious morality. Next was the book Doña Perfecta, written also by Benito Perez Galdos. It is a story of how the love and marriage between two people, Pepe and Rosario. Pepe, a symbol of modern enlightenment and intelligence, and Rosario, a symbol of a country of natural and traditional riches. He was meddled and obstructed by Don Innocencio, a symbol of corrupt church, and Doña Perfecta, a stiff-necked icon of the church. The novel, the novel illustrates the great power that the church wielded at the difference between the traditional provincial outlook and the modern liberal outlook. On January 2, 1884, Rizal proposed to the Circulo Hispano Filipino the uncollaboratively writing a novel about the Philippines, which was unanimously approved by the members. The project did not materialize because the members who promised to contribute did not write anything and they were more interested in writing about women. Thus, Rizal decided to do the project alone and started writing the early drafts of the Noli Metangre towards the end of the year. Meanwhile, in the Philippines, Leonor's mother discovered their long-distance love affair and intercepted and kept all the letters of Rizal. Leonor received his last letter dated March 30, 1884. Sabi niya sa kanyang sulat, Today, I visited your family, relatives in Madrid. The girls of my own country please me greatly, but I have found one back home who was charmed and who makes me dream. I believe my heart has no, has not lost any of its power to love. Only one I love most is not here. Doña Silvestra, the mother of Lenore, bribed the Degupan's postmaster to intercept all letters addressed to Lenore and hand them to her. There was a time that Rizal in Spain sacrificed because his family underwent a severe financial crisis. As a result, Rizal's allowance was reduced and Pasiano was forced to even sell his horses for his brother's allowance. He tightened his budget to 35 pesos a month for food, clothing, and books. He used second-hand clothes which she bought from pawn shops. The price of sugar went too high that they had plenty of stocks left unsold. The land rent in their haciendas also went up. The Rizal family was forced to pay the increased rate of land rent. These were the times when Rizal was in dire financial difficulties in Spain. There were even days when he ate only one meal. There were also days wherein he attended classes without eating, thus he tried to earn some money by working as a private tutor for rich students in Madrid. Tingnan nyo, si Rizal ay madiskarteng estudyante rin pala habang nag-aaral sa Madrid. On June 25, 1884, he won a prize in a literary competition which helped him buy his daily needs. 
He wrote in his diary the next day, I am hungry and I have nothing to eat and no money. Poverty and hunger do not make one happy. In that evening, Rizal delivered a toast at a bank banquet uh, praising Filipino painters Juan Luna and Felix Resurrection Hidalgo, who won top prizes at the National Exposition of Fine Arts in Europe. It was Rizal's first speech before a public audience. Luna, who won the top prize for his Spolarium painting, Spolarium is a Latin word referring to the basement of the Roman Colosseum where the fallen and dying gladiators are dumped and devoid of their worldly possessions. At the center of Luna's painting are fallen gladiators being dragged by Roman soldiers. Hidalgo, another Philippine painter, a Filipino painter, received the second place for his painting Christian Virgins Exposed to the Public. Rizal emphasized in his speech that Luna and Hidalgo showed that genius is not a monopoly of any race. The arts of both men were products of both Philippines and Spain and were unifying of both peoples. Rizal made refined sarcastic remarks against the ill-wishers of the Filipinos and voiced out hope that Spain will someday grant the reforms needed by Filipinos. Rizal's speech even reached the Philippines through the newspaper El Liberal. Many Spaniards in the country, especially the priors, were not pleased about the speech. His mother, Doña Chodora, was filled with anxiety and was not able to eat for days because she knew her son made more enemies. Through a letter, Pasiano cautioned Rizal, and Doña Chodora told Rizal to stop learning the things which can lead to his ruin. On June 29, 1884, Rizal completed his medical studies and was given the title Licenciado en Medicina, which enabled him to practice medicine. He continued studying subjects leading to a doctorate in medicine but was not able to get the degree because first he was not able to present a doctoral thesis required for graduation. Second, he, was, he has not paid the corresponding fees. However, licentiate in medicine was enough for one to practice the medical profession during his time. It was through the help of his friend Maximo Viola who lent him money that he was able to secure his certificate and he was able to practice medicine. After which Rizal obtained the whereabouts of Leonor from friends back in the country. In the letter of Mariano Katigbak dated June 27, 1884, sabi niya, You would not know Leonor if you now see her. Your sweetheart is going down very much. No doubt because of her worry. She who think, she who I think knew love for the first and only time has sacrificed the man of her heart and sees that instead of the approach of a happy ending, that ending is getting farther away with gigantic strides. In addition, Chen Goy's letter dated August 31, 1884 stated, The little landlady is now fairly well, for she is not as thin as before. I have a reputation as an observer and profound dosometer, and I am going to tell you that the cause of her ailments is your having gone to the land without her consent. This is what I understand, and if I'm wrong, what can be done? Everybody makes a mistake. This is a great sacrifice okay, to live your love, your one great love for your people. In Universidad Central de Madrid, Rizal was attracted to liberals, especially Dr. Miguel Moraita, who was one an advocate of freedom and self-determination. 
Like UST, the Universidad Central de Madrid catered to a mixture of people of various beliefs, liberals, conservatives, republicans, monarchists, and revolutionists. Moraita was a member of Circulo Hispano-Filipino, a group of reformists who want to uh, who want the Spanish government to grant Filipinos and its government fundamental rights that every Spaniard enjoys. University authorities considered Moraita a supporter of anarchists and was expelled from the university when he proclaimed freedom of science and the teacher during the opening of the academic year. As a result, bloody student riots erupted on November 20 to 22, 1884 between supporters and opponents of Moraita in the campus and in the streets of Madrid. Sino mag-aakala na si Rizal sumali rin sa mga protesta at riot na mga ito? During his 24th birthday, dated June 19, 1885, Rizal obtained the degree Licenciado en Filosofía y Letras with the rating Sobresaliente. This degree qualified him to serve as a professor of humanities in any Spanish university. But instead, Rizal decided to improve his training in medicine by going to Paris and Germany. Ang goal niya ay maging magaling na ophthalmologist o doktor sa mata. Leonor sent Rizal an autograph photo containing an inscription at the back. Ang nakasaad to Jose from his faithful cousin. Ang sakit, no? But when he decoded it, Leonor really meant to my unforgettable and dearest lover. This picture is dedicated by his devoted Leonor. When Leonor stopped receiving letters from Rizal, she wrote a letter to him expressing her sadness because he was not writing to her. She indicated her letter that Rizal was a newly opened rose, very flushed and fragrant at the beginning, but afterwards it begins to wither, and that she was too resentful because of what he had done to her. Walang kaalam-alam si Jose at Leonor na hindi pala nakakarating kay Leonor ang mga sulat ni Jose sa kanyang kasintahan dahil palihim na hinaharang ng ina ni Leonor ang mga sulat ni Jose. Shortly before going to Paris, Rizal received a letter dated September 1885 from Chengoy about Leonor. Sabi niya, I congratulate you on your good choice of the woman who is to be your faithful companion. She's no longer in Concordia College but in the Gupan Pangasinan beside her parents and I do not know whether she will return to finish her education. From Madrid, Rizal went to Paris in 1885 and continued his medical studies under the expert guidance of a famous French ophthalmologist named Louis de Wecker from October 1885 to January 1886. The Nolimitangre was already half finished at this time. Dr. Wecker taught Rizal actual performance of eye operation including various techniques on how to operate eyes. He also learned recent studies on ailment of the eyes. After working hours, he visited his fellow Filipino expatriates, Juan Luna, Felix Resurrection Hidalgo, and Trindad Pardo de Tabera in the city, which helped him improve his ability to learn and speak French more fluently. After his apprenticeship he, from Dr. Wecker, he worked as an assistant of Dr. Xavier Galizowski, a Polish doctor and inventor. For a time, Rizal stayed in the studio of one Luna. He became Luna's model in two of his paintings before leaving the city. Rizal had completed an additional one-fourth of the Noli at that time. On February 8, 1886, Rizal arrived in Heidelberg, Germany and started his special training under an eminent German ophthalmologist named Otto van Becker, where he became one of the doctor's best students. 
And the Dr. Becker, Rizal focused more on studying rather than doing actual operations. To save money, he lived in a boarding house with German law students. Later, he transferred to a boarding house close to the University of Heidelberg. He took time to attend lectures at the University of Heidelberg. He loved the peaceful surroundings, made sketches of them, and even wrote a poem, Alas Flores de Heidelberg, dated April 22, 1886. The poem was inspired by the blooming flowers of Heidelberg and along the Neckar River, which made him homesick. After composing the poem, Rizal took a three-month vacation at Wilhelmsfeld, a mountainous village at Heidelberg. He lived in the house of Pastor Karl Ulmer, a Lutheran minister with whom they became good friends. They had frequent afternoon walks where Rizal learned much German religious ideas. Sir Rizal also observed that Catholics and Protestants coexisted and get along well with each other in Heidelberg, unlike in the Philippines where Catholics discriminated other religious believers. In May 1886, Chengger again wrote to Rizal about the result of his friend Sixto Lopez's visit and observation of Lenore, who was addressed as Question of the Orient. Sabi niya, the beautiful but delicate question of the Orient is still in the gupan beside her parents who rave about her. Her friend Sixto Lopez told me that he had been in that town taking supper in their home. This young man became most enthusiastic over the question, whom he found each day more precious and thrifty. But according to him, she is now no more to be seen with as much finery as when we were together in their house. While continuing his medical studies, he heard of an Austrian scholar whose historical and ethnographic publications on the Philippines reflected his abiding interest in a people and a country he had never seen with his own eyes. This scholar was Ferdinand Blumentritt. Blumentritt was then the director of Ateneo de Limerits in Austria. They became good friends. Rizal was born, uh, Blumentritt was born in Prague, then the country of Czechoslovakia. Upon learning that Blumentritt was studying the Tagalog language, Rizal sent him a letter dated July 31, 1886. Sabi niya sa kanyang liham, Esteemed sir, having heard that you, your lordship is studying our language and that you have already published some books on the subject, I take the liberty of sending you a valuable book written in that language by a countryman of mine. Blumentritt reciprocated with a gift of two books. Rizal sent the book Arithmetica by Rufino Baltasar Hernandez of Santa Cruz, Laguna, published by USD Press, 1868. Since then, they exchanged letters more frequently. It was Blumentritt who was given by Rizal one of the earliest available copies of his novel Nore Mitangere. Moreover, through Blumentritt, Rizal was introduced to Fyodor Hagor and Hans Virchow, who were both anthropologists studying Philippine culture in Berlin. The two continued to exchange letters about their personal experiences and helped each other in their scholarly endeavors. They say an intellectual friendship was born between them through a common love for the Philippines. In Blumentritt, Rizal found a friend and a teacher. They both agreed that the Philippine problem was the rule of the friars 
and they plotted together for an independent Philippines. Soon, Blumentritt became an advocate of Philippine independence and one of the strongest European voices in praise of Filipino culture. On August 14, 1886, Rizal arrived at University of Leipzig to study psychology and history. There, he became friends with Professor Friedrich Ratzel, one of the historians who changed the methods of historical research. While in Leipzig, Rizal contemplated in enrolling law at the University of Heidelberg, but his brother, Pasiano, again discouraged him. Rizal found out that the cost of living in Leipzig was the cheapest in Europe, so he stayed there for two months and a half. In October 29, 1886, he left Leipzig for Dresden, where he met Dr. Adolf B. Mayer, the director of the Anthropological and Ethnological Museum of Dresden. At the end of the school term, Rizal traveled to Berlin, where he arrived when he arrived at Berlin, November 1, 1886, he also sought the friendship of eminent scholars. It was in Berlin where he was introduced to Dr. Fyodor Hagor, who wrote the book Travels to the Philippines. A book admired by Rizal when he was still in Ateneo. They became good, warm friends. For your information, Hagor visited the Philippines in 1859 and in 1860, up to 1860, when Rizal was not yet born. Dr. Hagor introduced Rizal to Dr. Rudolf Bircho, a famous German physician, anthropologist, ethnologist, reformist, and politician. Rizal became a member of Berlin Society for Anthropology Ethnology and Prehistory, founded by Dr. Bircho, upon the recommendation, of course, of Dr. Hagor and Dr. Mayer. He was the first Asian accorded with honors as a member of this organization because of his articles and researches published. His membership in scientific societies in Europe proved that his scientific knowledge was recognized by European scientists. Later, Dr. Bircho, having recognized Rizal's genius, invited him to give a lecture before the Ethnographic Society of Berlin. Ang tindi ni Rizal, ano? In response, Rizal wrote a scholarly paper in German entitled Tagalish Berkunst or Tagalog Metrical Art, which she read before the society in April 1887. The paper was published by the society in the same year and it elicited favorable comments from all scientific quarters. Rizal lived in Berlin for the following reasons. First, to gain further knowledge of ophthalmology. Second, to further his studies on sciences and language. Third, to observe the economic political conditions of the German nation. And lastly, to associate with famous German scientists and scholars. While in Berlin, he was able to finish and was ready to publish his novel Noli Mitangere. And according to his biographers, despite all the success of Rizal, he lived a methodical and frugal life in Berlin. Matinde yung pinagdaanan niya bago niya na publish yung Noli Mitangere. By day, he worked as an assistant in the clinic of Dr. Carl Ernst Sweger. At night, he attended lectures at the University of Berlin. He spent his leisure moments touring the countryside, observing keenly the customs, dresses, homes, and occupations of the peasants in all places he visited. The winter of 1886 in Berlin was his gloomiest. Why? Because he lived in poverty because of what his family suffered wherein they were not able to send his allowance. So he was flat broke in Berlin. Pasiano knew that Jose was in terrible need and 
he did his best to raise the money, but the sugarcane crops were ravaged by locusts and sugar market collapsed. The result? Rizal starved, shivered in cold, and got sick, and he feared that it was already tuberculosis. Isinanglapan niya yung diamond rin ng kanyang kapatid na si Saturnina para lang may makain. Dumating na sa puntong hindi na niya kayang bayaran yung upan niya sa kanyang landlord. Muntik na siyang pinaalis. He limited himself to one meal a day of either bread and water or cheap vegetable soup. His clothes were old and trade bare. And he was actually coughing out of blood. Rizal started the final revisions of the Noli and he was almost finished by December. But he was desperate as he did not have money to publish it. Despite the cold weather, starvation, and sickness, he pursued to finish the Noli and was almost ready for printing. In desperation, he almost threw the manuscript into the fire when a telegram from a friend, Dr. Maximo Viola, son of a rich family in San Miguel, Bulacan, arrived informing him that he was on his way to Berlin. Hope sprang in Rizal's heart, sabi niya sa kanyang diary. It revived me. It gave me new hope. I went to the station to receive him and spoke to him about my work. He said, he might be able to help me. Viola was shocked to see Rizal living in poverty and so sick due to lack of proper nourishment. Viola saved the Noli by offering Rizal to shoulder its printing cost. He also lent Rizal some cash for living expenses while waiting for the latter's allowance from Calamba. Whew. Rizal celebrated his Christmas of 1886 with Viola in Santuas Feast. By February 21, 1887, the Noli was finished and finally ready for printing. Through the providential help of Viola, they found the cheapest printing house which charged 300 pesos for 2,000 copies. On March 21, 1887, the Noli Mitanghere came off the press. Rizal immediately sent the first copies of the novel to his intimate friends, Ferdinand Blumentritt, Antonio Maria Regidor, Graciano Lopez Eina, Mariano Ponce, and Felix Resurrection Hidalgo. On his letter to Blumentritt dated March 21, 1887, Rizal wrote, I am sending you a book. It is my first book. It is the first impartial and bold book on the life of the Tagalogs. The Filipinos will find it the history of the Philippines in the last 10 years. The government and the friars will probably attack the work, resulting my refuting my arguments. I hope I can answer the concepts which have been fabricated to malign us. On March 29, 1887, Rizal gave Viola the Gali proofs of the Noli, carefully rolled around the pen he used in writing it, and co a complimentary copy with the following inscription. To my dear friend Maximo Viola, the first to read and appreciate my work. Signed, Jose Rizal. A year later, Rizal wrote to his good friend and former classmate, Fernando Cannon, I did not believe the Noli Metangere would ever be published when I was in Berlin, broken-hearted, weakened, and discouraged from hunger and deprivation. I was on the point of throwing my work into the fire as a thing, accursed and fit only to die. Bound copies were boxed and sent to some of his friends in Barcelona and Madrid. These friends employed clever means to smuggle them in the Philippines by discussing them as merchandise. This is the journey of Rizal and the publication of the first novel, Noli Mitanghere.
Your assignment is to read the No Limitang Hire. Please read. Thank you for listening.